In the last video, we came upon a bit of a mystery thanks to this book right here. Victor Echo 6 Whiskey Golf Mic. Thank you. You are about 5'5 five five into Alberta. So the ARRL antenna book basically says that depending upon the frequency of the signal traveling along a coaxial cable, its speed is going to change. The velocity factor of the coaxial cable is not constant. After the experiment we did proved that statement true, of course I had to ask the question why. And I've done quite a bit of research over the last few days and I think I have a solution for you guys. I think the best place to start on this will be to take a look at a piece of coaxial cable and to describe how it works. So I've gone ahead and cut a chunk of LMR 400 here. And uh, of course LMR 400 has a, um, a wire braid and a foil shield here. And I'm going to take this off and we're going to look here. Now, when you transmit, your radio is placing a voltage onto the center conductor. That voltage forms an electric field between the center conductor and the inside of the shield here. And of course, that field exists in this part here, which is, is the dielectric. So it turns out that the dielectric is actually a very important part of the, of the coaxial cable. And so the dielectric having a very high importance in the uh, operation of a coaxial cable, it has various properties, and one of which that I learned about is called permittivity. And what permittivity is, is, is basically how much the electric field of the EM wave can affect the, um, the physical properties of the dielectric. So what it's doing actually is, is is the E field is causing a polarization within the dielectric and this polarization stores energy. It takes energy to polarize the dielectric and then as the field is reduced the dielectric um, gives back that energy and this is how it um, it uh, aids in propagating the electromagnetic wave down the coaxial cable. So of course this now brings another question. What is it that's being polarized? Well, it turns out there's several things and they um, react at different frequencies in different ways. But there can be a polarization on the molecular level or there can be a polarization also on the atomic level. And I, apparently it's the atomic level that's primarily responsible for the propagation of the electromagnetic wave down the coaxial cable. I found a diagram here that shows the polarization or an example of polarization of the uh, in the presence of an E field and you can see here that this is there is no electric field present here everything is kind of just all random scrambled around here the negative and positive charges are every which way and in the presence of the E field they they tend to want to line up one way so this is the polarization that they're talking about at higher frequencies the efficiency of the polarization at the atomic level in the dielectric decreases and this uh, impacts how much electric field energy can be temporarily stored in the dielectric so what this process is called is dielectric dispersion if you wish to look it up you can do some reading on that but this occurs because as the frequency increases the polarization mechanisms within this material um, doesn't it's less efficient so it reduces the amount of energy that it can temporarily store which speeds up the process of of uh, I guess if you want to visualize it like a bucket brigade if you have large buckets it's going to take more time for this bucket to empty into the next bucket to empty into the next bucket as it goes down the bucket line if there are smaller buckets they can happen pretty fast you can empty bucket 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 and in, into the next bucket <laughs> if you will so uh, this is kind of how I've been able to visualize in my mind what's going on here with regards to the speed at which the electromagnetic wave uh, depending on its frequency travels along the coaxial cable. 
So I had a comment on the last video and also it, it came up in a conversation with another radio operator on one of the local repeaters. Uh, we're looking at billionths of a second here when we're measuring the difference in um, time it takes for the electromagnetic wave to travel down this coaxial cable at the different frequencies um, to 17 and a half nanoseconds. So that's 17 and a half billionths of a second difference. Uh, the question came up, does that have any bearing on us as operators in the real world? Well, I did a little bit of math, and it turns out that if you, uh, the calculation in a vacuum, the electromagnetic wave will travel just about 30 centimeters for every nanosecond that goes by of time. So on, a, on this piece of coaxial cable, if we assume 0.66 is the velocity factor, it's gonna, it works out to about 8 inches. So let's take a look at that. So for every every nanosecond, that electromagnetic wave will travel about eight inches that far. So how would that affect us? Well, well, let's say you're trying to calculate the length of a quarter wave stub made out of a piece of coaxial cable, and you're assuming the velocity factor is going to be 0.66. Uh, what might be helpful is if you checked the velocity factor of the cable at the actual frequency you intended to be using it at and then use that to calculate the length of the stub. Um, so that's one possible example of uh, where you might be able to use this information to make things a bit more accurately. And now knowing what I know, the next time I key up on 80 meters I'm going to know that my signal takes just a little bit longer to reach the antenna. <laughs>